seat in there and put your shoes in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, you do have socks on under that. Good. Am I going to be able to keep these things? Oh yeah, they're gonna go with you. They'll follow you. Like you're in here with me for a bit. We've got some things to talk about. So you put your shoes on, get comfortable. Probably keep your feet warmer. I can't go over that cell. What's that? I can't go over those cells. No. Can you believe? We're not. Uh... <laughs> I can't help believe it. I tell you. There's your food. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. There's um you said cream with your coffee. Yeah. You can add it. I didn't know if you wanted yeah. one or two. Help yourself. A couple of housekeeping details. You eat, do your thing, okay? There's a couple of things I want to explain to you so you understand. Um everything you and I do. Everything we say in this room, back in this cell block area, mm -hmm. is all recorded. Uh -huh. Okay. You mean as a, a tape recorder somewhere? Yep. It's all being recorded, video and audio. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can hear us and see us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're going to notice, Sandy, with me today, like I don't sit and I don't write things down. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, well, the way policing is now, you record everything, and it's for your protection. It's also for my protection. Okay? Nobody can ever say down the road, Andy said this when he didn't, or mm -hmm. Scott said this when he didn't. You know, we, we live in a world now where it's like, no, we can just press play, mm -hmm. and you can listen to what I said, okay? So I just wanted to let you know that that's happening, okay? And, mm -hmm. and just, you know, I'm sure you're not surprised by that. If you, mm -hmm. um, if you go anywhere these days, drive to a bank, drive to a coffee shop, drive to a grocery store, they're taking our picture. Mm -hmm. it's, that's the world we live in, okay? Well, that's no different than law enforcement. That's how we do things now. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. I'm just going to turn this fan on this heater down a little bit. Are you warm enough? I'm okay. Okay. I'm going to turn it off for now a little bit. If you aren't warm enough, you let me know and I'll turn it back on, okay? Did you have breakfast this morning? Mm -hmm. What time did you eat? I don't eat a lot. I'm not a big eater. Just kind of small meals throughout I the day? Had, uh, <clears throat> well, I am supposed to do because I'm diabetic, but I don't do it because I can't be bothered washing up. This is all old deal. Gotcha. Oh, okay. But you got to eat if you're diabetic. You've got special dietary restrictions? No. Oh, I had... Um, some cereal and banana and an English muffin for my breakfast. Good. Okay. Well, that's good. And a pot of tea. I like tea. You like tea? I drink a lot of tea. Yeah. Okay. And obviously coffee too. Or are you just every once in a while? I drink tea at mm -hmm. breakfast and lunch. I drink mm -hmm. coffee after my supper. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, I hope you don't mind. I got one for myself, too, so I could join you. I didn't need any mm -hmm. food, but if you're going to have a coffee, I thought I'll take advantage. I just got here myself, so as we settle into this process, um, I'll have a coffee with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you understand you're at the Peterborough Police Service? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any, any confusion as to where you are right now? No, no, no. Okay. Do you know what day it is? Saturday. Do you know what the date is? What? Do you know what the date is? Uh, maybe around the 20th or 21st, I'm not sure. You're close. When uh, when you're retired, you know, days are all the same. They just kind of blend. The, the whole 
time is just the one continuum. Yeah. Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, and they're all the same. But it's not like that. When you work, it's not like that. Yeah, you know, you're, yeah. you're aware of every day and, yeah. and the weekends. But when you're retired, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet, so <laughs> unfortunately, I got to keep track of dates and times and all that stuff. Today, you were close. Today's the 22nd. 22nd? 22nd of November, okay. I keep track of the date on my calendar. Yep. At home. But they took it away. So now I, I've lost all the people's birthdays and anniversaries and everything else. Everything was in that calendar? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, as we, you and I go through this process, Andy, there's no doubt you're going to have some questions for me. You feel free to ask me anything you want. Okay, if I can answer it, I will. And if I can't, I'll explain to you why. Okay? Okay, can we start with this? Sure. It's my understanding that the police are legally obliged to give me a list of the stuff that they take from my home and from my car. And I have asked several policemen for this list, and none of them will give me a list. So you want to know specifically what was taken I, from I your home? I want to know exactly what they took from my home and what they took from my car. Okay. Well, you don't even think, have, maybe I'm wrong. You though. don't even have your car back yet, do you? No. No. Okay. So maybe you can explain to me how it takes over a week to search a little car. Well, yeah, you know what? And I, I, when you're done eating and, and I'll let you finish, I will definitely answer that question for you. No issue. I got no problem answering that for you. And the house and the car were being searched. Yep. When the search warrants had expired. No, they hadn't. Anyway. anyway no, no, and, and I'm, I'm not arguing with you. Because I really do. But I can show you how how come they're not expired. I don't mind explaining that to you, because that's a logical question that people sometimes confuse. It's not important to me. I don't care how long they stay there. No. But I just, just want you to understand that the search warrants hadn't expired. Okay. What happens with a search warrant, so you understand, is that, and I have a copy of them here that I can show you, because that would probably familiarize yourself with them. But see, what happens with a search warrant is there's a date and a time put on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, But the date and the time is what we call the execution date and time, which means that the reader, the judge or justice, has authorized the police, yep, you can go search that car, or yes, you can go search that house. You have to execute that warrant on this date between these time frames. So maybe it would be like the 14th of November between 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 o'clock at night. That's when you have to execute this warrant. Once the police have executed that warrant within that time frame, there is no time limit at that point in time. Like They don't have to be out by 8 o'clock at night. It just means they have to have executed that warrant to show the judge or justice that yeah, we've entered the premise and we've executed it at that time. Because sometimes, and I'm not talking about this investigation, I'm talking about others that I've worked on, you could be at a scene or have an item for a long time. But what you're reading on the face of the warrant that you would have is what we refer to as the execution time. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe that's what you're looking at. And I just, you know, I, it's not a it's not like argument or debatable. It's a good question, and that's what that's no, how it works. It's, it's, it's not important to me, really. Okay. Well, you brought it up. It's a good but question. The list, the list is important. If, I'll get you a list. It is a fact that they're supposed to give me a list. Maybe they're not. Maybe I just have it wrong. I don't have a problem getting you a list of what was taken. It's not a secret. It's your house. Mm -hmm. Some of the things you probably noticed are missing. Maybe others you didn't, but I don't have a problem with it. At the end of the day, it's your material, it's your information. You have a right to know what it is. I was going to give you a friendly word of advice. What's that? If you're ever going to go to a house to ask somebody to speak to you so you can ask them questions, yeah. don't do it after they've been searched. 
because that person will be so pissed off they will they will not talk to you no matter what well you want to know something andy i couldn't agree with you more that's why we're here now and peter bro's out you should see the mess of my house did they not leave it's it in good shape it's stuff broken it's stuff damaged stuff scattered all over the place okay and it, I agree with you, Andy. I talk to people all the time, and you know what? Yeah, like if I if I go to anybody and say, "Here's a search warrant. I'm going to search your car," and I do that, and then the next day I show up saying, "Hey, would you like to come in and talk to me?" You're probably going to be annoyed with me. You're not going to be a happy guy. Depends the condition you left my car or my house in. Well, you don't have your car back, but you do have your house, and, and obviously you're saying your house wasn't left in great shape. My house. It's a disgrace. Okay. Not just bad shape, it's a disgrace. What, what did they do? They just turned the rain out and it on the floor. Okay. Okay, I'll, we'll deal with that. all the beds apart and the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, and that's not supposed to happen. You're, you, you, there's a way to search, there's a way to do it properly. Absolutely. And I don't know why, but they seem to want to open the windows. And as a result, the kitchen window, the handle's broken off it now, and I, I wanted to try and get it closed. But you can't close it? Because it's letting the, the cold air in. Okay. And I'll put up my cash bill. Yep. But they don't care about any of that stuff. We'll get that resolved. The police are a law unto themselves. They do whatever the hell they want. And they will not answer your questions. Doesn't matter what you ask them. Well, I told you today I'll answer your questions, so there you go. Gosh, these are messy things to eat, aren't they? They're good, but they're messy. I never leave them this normal. Well <laughs> those are the things that you don't eat when you're driving somewhere. Because they go all over the place. You can't keep track of it while you're driving, right? It's not good snacking food that way. If you need more, you could use those booty things if you want to wipe oh, your hands okay. too. Yeah, that's okay. I'm I, I can get you a list. I got no issue with that. Um, I'll answer your questions about why searches take the length of time that they do. Absolutely. What other questions you got for me? That's all really. I couldn't see why it took so long. And I couldn't see why I can't get a list. You'll get a list. I don't even know why they arrested me. You can explain all that to you. Because, You'll know clearly. Because I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. You could let me stay at home where at least I'd be comfortable. And I wouldn't be causing you any trouble or expense. And any time you want me, you just come and get me. I'd be right there, shouldn't we? Right, but that's what happened today. They came and got you. Right? See, there's yeah. a process we have to follow. Mm -hmm. So, the way it works when you ask about arrest and things like that, and I don't, I don't want you to say anything, I just want you to listen to me, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you, you understand that you're under arrest. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did the officers tell you that you're under arrest for when they went and arrested you today? Murder in the first degree and criminal harassment. For, okay, exactly. And that's my understanding too, right? So you, you, you know that you're under arrest for murder in the first degree and criminal harassment. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're talking right now about the, the disappearance and murder of Lise for dead. Yeah. Okay. I don't need you to say anything other than just it's been explained to you that she's the person who's missing. You're aware of this through the course of this mm -hmm. investigation. Mm -hmm. okay? and, and this is the way we look at it from the OPP perspective, okay, Andy? Um, I'll get into it in a little bit more detail in a second here, but she, she's, you're under arrest for that. They told you that today. They also, when they arrested you, they would have told you your rights. They would have read your mm -hmm. rights to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And I, it's my understanding as well that you also spoke to a lawyer today. Yeah. I don't want to know what you and the lawyer talked about. I just, you did speak to a lawyer. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Are you satisfied with the advice you received from that lawyer? 
You don't need to tell me what that person told you. I'm just asking yeah, you. Yeah, I'm satisfied. Okay, and, and you understood what they told you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you want to, you know, these are serious allegations because the allegations are murder in the first, murder in the first degree. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, other than treason to the queen, it doesn't get much higher than that in the criminal code when we talk about offenses mm -hmm. against another person. Okay? That's an arrestable offense. And we as officers have an obligation when it comes to certain types of offenses, okay, where we don't have discretion to just leave somebody at home, come and deal with them when we need to. Mm -hmm. We need to arrest, process that individual, and then put them before the courts. Mm -hmm. And it's the courts that then decide on continued detention or whether or not they get released back into the community while these allegations are resolved. Does that make sense so mm -hmm. far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why you were arrested. That's why we can't just leave you at home. Okay. I'm not suggesting for one moment that you're planning on going anywhere or that you <laughs> want to cause problems to anybody, mm -hmm. but that's the way the law is written and that's the way the law works. Okay. So what will happen from this process on is that you will eventually end up before the courts. Okay. They will decide whether or not you continue to stay in jail or whether or not you get released back into the community while these allegations move forward to the courts. Make sense so far? Have you any idea when this will happen? It'll start tomorrow. Oh. Okay, the process will start tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow's a Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that you'll be remanded into custody tomorrow. So what that means is you will appear before a justice of the peace, probably on a video camera. Mm -hmm. You'll be remanded into custody. And then next week, I don't know exactly what day, but probably Monday, Tuesday, it'll be early, you will actually appear in court. Okay? And your lawyer will be there. The Crown Prosecution will be there. And they will, you know, your lawyer will instruct you in the courts as to what your wishes are, and they will decide, in the courts I'm referring to, they will decide whether or not you get out or you continue to stay in jail. I'm going to tell you right now, Andy, just so you, just so you know, these are murder allegations. These are extremely serious. Um, in my experience, the likelihood that you'll be released is very slim. I'm just being honest with you, mm -hmm. okay? It's just the way it is. So if I'm not released, will I be coming back here? No. You'll go to the jail. In Lindsay? I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Because um, I'm not from here. So if Lindsay is the closest jail to here, then I guess that's where you would go. I can find that out. But I'm going to be here at least for two or three days. No. You will be here today. You will probably be here tonight. You'll be gone by tomorrow. I would think. Oh. Okay. 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 I'm just that's as straight up an answer as I can give you. So if I'm going tomorrow, I'll be going to the jail in Lindsay. Is that what you mean? Yes. I will confirm that for you in case there's a different jail around here that they would take to take you to. But it, it's quite conceivable it's the jail in Lindsay. That would make sense. Yeah. Okay. In, regardless of where they take you. It's, it, it's an institution that they would take you and hold you until you go to court. Okay? Like I say, I'm not from here. Mm -hmm. It's different everywhere I go in the province. But I can certainly, before we're done here today, find out which jail you would go to. Okay? So those are the allegations. That's what you're here for. You understand that. Mm -hmm. I think we've clearly established the fact that they're very, very serious. Mm -hmm. You would agree with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now... I just want to cover off a couple things with you because I met you a little while ago back in the cells when we talked. That's mm -hmm. the first time I've ever met you. Um, you understand that you're under arrest. I know that you've spoken to a lawyer, okay? But I just want to make sure you clearly understand your rights, okay? So you understand that you're being charged with murder in the first degree, mm -hmm. okay, and criminal harassment. These are with respect to the allegations against uh, lease for debt. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go into that in a little bit more in a minute. Okay, I want you to understand that you know that you have the right to speak to a lawyer. Okay, 
I know you've already spoken to a lawyer, so we have two options in this country. We have what we call uh, legal aid or duty counsel, which is my understanding that that's who you spoke to. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. And there's a 1-800 toll-free number that puts you in touch with them. They're able to provide you with free legal advice rights 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, And uh, if that's you know a person you want to speak to to seek out legal advice, like you did, that's an option that's available to you. Okay, mm -hmm. In this country, we also have something known as what we call counsel of choice. What that means is People are free to choose any lawyer they want. It doesn't have to be a free legal aid duty counsel lawyer, okay? And, and you, you have that right as well. We all have those rights. Yeah. So you have that right as well, where you can also pick out your own lawyer. We call that counsel of choice, okay? So whether you know your own lawyer, or have your own lawyer, or you want to choose your own lawyer, that's entirely up to you. Do you understand these rights? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to speak to a lawyer? I know you've already spoken to legal aid duty counsel. I'm just well, asking. That that lawyer I spoke to said there would be a lawyer here tomorrow. Okay, that, that I don't know. That's got nothing to do with me. I don't, lawyers don't come to the police stations. I'll tell you that right now. That's as honest as I can be with you. Maybe, maybe what they were telling you is that the lawyer will be at the court. Yeah. Not at the police station. That's, well, that's what I mean. The lawyer. Okay. He said there would be a lawyer in attendance when I was being... Yes, that's at the court. I just want to be very clear with you on that, that that's at the court setting. Mm. There won't be a lawyer here mm. at the police station. Okay? I just want to be clear on that, okay? For, so are you, do you understand what your rights are? What I explained to you about no. the lawyers? Yeah, I think so. You're satisfied you had an opportunity to speak to the lawyer you wanted to? Is there anybody else you want to talk to? No. Okay. The other thing I want to explain to you is, and I know you've already had this explained to you, but um, you know, you're under no obligation to speak to me here today. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to feel obliged. I don't want you to feel compelled to say anything to me here today unless you want to. Okay? Mm -hmm. But just remember, whatever we do talk about is being recorded mm -hmm. and could be used as evidence in court. Okay? The other thing is, I know that you've spoken to other police officers <laughs> in relation to this investigation before you've met me here today. Is mm -hmm. that accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay. As a result of that, okay, this is very important. I don't want you to feel compelled. I don't want you to feel obliged in any way, okay, that you have to repeat anything to me here today that you may have already told another police officer, okay? Mm -hmm. You're under no obligation, you're not obliged, you're not compelled in any way to repeat any of your previous conversations with any other officers to me here today, okay? But again, just remember that whatever we do talk about could be used in evidence, mm -hmm. okay? Who, who ultimately decides whether something can be used in evidence in court or not? Do you know? I guess the judge. Absolutely. And you know what, I ask that question of everybody because I want people to have an understanding that it's not up to me, it's not up to lawyers, it's up to the judge. Mm -hmm. And a judge ultimately decides if something is allowed to be used in court. And that's why I always use the word allowed, because just because people talk to me doesn't mean it's allowed to be in court. The ultimate decision rests with the judge. Mm -hmm. Make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the judge might not think about that if the defense attorney doesn't an objection. Well, here's the thing about defense attorneys. They have to listen to you because they represent you. They yeah, work yeah, for you. But they may not be bright enough to know when to object. Well, then if you're bright enough, you tell them when and to the object. And judge, the judge may be asleep. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but you have to understand, as this process unfolds, Andy, defense lawyers work for you. It's your job to make sure that they're doing what you want them to do. They are there to provide you with good advice, sound advice. They are your legal barometer. However, you're allowed to make up your own mind. Mm -hmm. You're a smart man. So if you don't think they're doing something that you want them to do, then you need to tell them that. Okay? That's that's you know down the road where you down you know that's a process down the road. But don't ever forget that, that they're there for you. They work for you. Okay? 
And they're there to guide you. Lawyers are very smart people. So are judges. You have to remember, judges were once lawyers. Mm -hmm. Right? But by and large, you know, they have to remember that they're representing you. They have your best interest at heart. But they have to listen to you as well because they're there to represent you. Period. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any confusion about anything that I've explained to you here so far? No. Any questions on any of that? The only question I have is why it took over a week to search my house and over a week to search my car. That does not make any sense at all to me. Okay. Um, I will answer your question. Okay. And why, why I didn't get a list of things taken. Okay. Well, the list of things, um, you know, there's no obligation on the police to hand you something like that. That comes out through what's known as court disclosure. So when the police put together their crown brief and present it to the courts to say, here's the allegations and this is why we think this person committed this offense, that's called disclosure. And disclosure comes to you and your lawyer. And in that disclosure will then be a list of everything that was taken, everything that was seized. So there's no obligation on the police to hand you a list ahead of time. I was told that there was. Okay. If I can ask, who told you that? But well, the policeman I was speaking to. Okay. Well, here's the thing, Eddie. I personally don't have a problem getting you a list because there's no issue with it. You're gonna, you, it's your house. You should already know what's missing. And if there's certain things that you're not sure, we'll you tell you. You should see the mess. I couldn't tell you what's missing or what's not missing. Okay. Everything's just a mess. Andy, I'll get you a list. <laughs> That's how insignificant it is to me. I'll get you a list. There's no secrets here because you know what? It's your property. It's things that belong to you. Why would I not tell you? So I don't have a problem with that. Why does it take so long to do your car? Well, here's the thing. We still have your car. Okay. Forensic examinations, which is what's happening with your car, take time. And here's the reason why it takes time. This is one investigation that's happening in the entire province. Mm -hmm. On any given time, unfortunately, there are many serious investigations that are happening all over this province every day. When people seize things that they want to have forensically examined, Traditionally, all of our exhibits go to what we refer to as the Center of Forensic Sciences. You've heard of that place? Is that in London? No, it's in Toronto. There's one in Toronto and there's also one in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the biggest one is in Toronto. Okay? That's traditionally where police, law enforcement send their exhibits for forensic examinations. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are busy. Period. So what happens is, and I know this doesn't sound fair, and it, but what happens is we are one case at this day, at this time, that sends down a car and says we want to have it forensically examined. They have cars lined up, they have exhibits lined up, they have everything lined up, and they have to prioritize them and get to them when they can. So are you saying my car was taken to Toronto? Uh, I believe that's where your car went to, yeah. You're kidding. No. We didn't drive it. Don't worry, nobody drove your car to Toronto. We tow it, put it in a nice big enclosed truck and take it down, protect it, but that's where the, the scientific work has to happen. The scientists then go through the car. And here's the thing, once they start looking at your car, it takes a long time sometimes. Because it's not just walk into room. We're talking about you know special scientific procedures that mm -hmm. have to take place, that things that aren't visible to the naked eye special uh, procedures that take place to, to make exhibits become visible, to be revealed, then further processes to, to, to uh, you know, work up those exhibits to figure out what they are. We're, hey, we're looking for everything from hair and fibers to DNA, everything, right? That takes time. You figure the size of a, the inside of a car, the size of the outside of a car. We, you know what, we will look for exhibits, we will look for things as small as that little piece of lettuce and sesame mm -hmm. seed on the table. And we will work up a DNA profile from that. Okay, And you think of the size of that and put that in context with the entire vehicle, mm -hmm. that's why it takes a long time to go through your vehicle. So you don't know at the moment what stage in the process my car is in? I know they've started to look at it. I know they're not done. 
Have you any idea when they will be? Of when the car will come back? No. I don't today, no. As I sit here today, I don't know when that car will be done. Okay. But when it's done, when the police no longer need it, and it's no longer uh, of any evidentiary value, like we no longer need to hold on to mm -hmm. it to process it, it will be returned. And it will be returned in the same condition with which it was taken. And if you have a problem with that, and there's something different about that, then you call me. Does that sound fair? Mm-hmm. I still think you could let me go home where I would at least be comfortable. I'm not going to go, go anywhere or do anything bad or anything like that. Andy, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I'm a very, very simple person. I lead a very simple life. I live alone. I have no TV, no computer, no telephone, none of that stuff. I just have books. I read constantly. What do you read? Everything. Mostly true stories, rather than fiction. I don't read much fiction. I like true stories in like sports movies and sports books and like mm -hmm. uh, things like that. What's your passion? What do you like? When you talk about, you say like true stories, what do you like? I've got autobiographies from Margaret Thatcher, Michael Caine, the movie star. Yep. Um, uh, a guy. Yeah, forget his name, he was a spy in Britain. And he was caught. George, George something. He was a spy in Britain. Yeah. And he got caught and he got sentenced to 42 years, I think it was. Yeah. In Wormwood Scrubs, which was a big prison in London, which was considered to be impregnable. Yeah. And after a few years, he escaped from it. And he tells you in his book, he tells you, well, he tells you about his childhood and growing up and the whole business, you know. Yeah. And how he escaped and how he got away from Britain and managed to get to Germany and Berlin. And from then, the communists who they were spying for him took him to Moscow and he lived in Moscow since then. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very, yeah. So, no, no, no TV, no internet, no telephone. That's obviously by choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a smart man, so mm -hmm. why, why did you make that choice that you don't want those things? I find these things are dangerous. Okay. Not so long ago, I, had a, I read a case of a woman who actually lost her house. And apparently these crooks got a hold of the data from her credit card. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know how they did this, but they were able to transfer ownership of the house from the lady's name to their name and they sold it. Right. And then eventually it came out that this has happened. Right. And the police, I think the police found the, the guys who did this one. But it cost that woman thousands and thousands of dollars in legal expenses to try and get her house back. Yeah. And that's just one of thousands of frauds that are committed every day yep. with credit cards and computers. Absolutely, I agree. So if you don't want to be caught up in something like that, just don't have a computer or credit card. Yeah, you know what? It's not a bad way to look at it. Like, How can anybody argue with that? Well, people say to me, how can you live without a telephone? You know? And I say to them, how do you think people lived before the telephone was invented? They led perfectly productive lives and had perfectly normal lives. Well, I look at it this way as well. I have uh, three daughters, right? Now, yeah, you're older than me, but I grew up, when I, when I was growing up in my generation, there were no cell phones, there were no computers, there was no internet. Um, we had black and white television. Mm -hmm. We didn't have remote controls, right? Um, my, you know, if somebody needed to get a hold of me, 
they knew where I was, and hopefully they either called the school or whatever. But if I needed to get a hold of them, 10 cents got you a pay phone, mm -hmm. and you made a phone call. Mm -hmm. I fast forward now to this generation that we're in, and there's kids now that how, they, they, they seem to think they can't survive without a computer, without a cell phone. Mm -hmm. How do they stay in touch with everybody? Socially, I find kids now, my own included, are socially inept mm -hmm. <laughs> because they don't talk on the phone anymore. They text and write one another through emails. They don't write letters. They don't talk on the phone. And when I do force my girls to talk on the phone to their friends, they sound socially awkward. Mm -hmm. they, they can't carry a conversation. It's actually funny to listen to it. So you're not wrong in your thinking. <laughs> um, it's just the way the world has gone. Because there's also a lot of good things that comes out of the technology, too. Yeah. What it is is cultural change. Absolutely. Gradual cultural change, which presumably will keep going. But um, it scares me. It scares the hell out of me. But you're I, 76. When I see what they can do nowadays, yeah. they can do almost anything they want with a computer. Yeah, almost, it's pretty incredible. Almost anything. It's pretty incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I mean, when you think about it, you're 76 years old. You've survived this long without those things. Mm -hmm. Really, you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. So what does it really matter what other people think? I don't care what other people think. Exactly, right? So, you know, you're good to go. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's, you're right, that's, you know, that's, but that's your choice. That's the way you've chosen to live. Yeah. So obviously you're a big reader. Well, the reason I don't have these things is certainly not because I can't afford to have if I wanted to make it happen. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that. It's, it's your choice. The reason I don't have TV, I think it, that's one of the biggest disappointments in my life is the way TV went. Because when it was in, came out at first, I thought, this is a great thing. We're going to be able to get all sorts of educational programs, right? programs of more nature, and all, all sorts of wonderful things we'll be able to get. And what do we get? The price is right. Well, then I just want you to understand what we're working on yeah. and what we're doing. Okay? So you're aware of, of, mm -hmm. of what's going mm -hmm. on. Because um, I, I think it's important for you to know. Yeah. I think it's important for you to understand what we're working on as investigators. Uh -huh. I think you have every right to know that. You're the one sitting here under arrest. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. I still don't know why they don't just let me go home and stay at home where I would be comfortable because I'm not, certainly not going to be going anywhere or doing anything. Right. Is that? Yeah, that's my car. That's your car. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's your carport? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is? What was that a picture of? Looks like an, an exhaust tailpipe. Yeah, and it's actually this one over here. Uh, I just want to show you. It's this one. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is a close-up uh -huh. of this exhaust mm -hmm. pipe. So the way that vehicle is facing right now, that would be the driver's side. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And you agree that's your car? Mm -hmm. That's your carport? Yep. Okay. So this is this blowing up. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. It's blood. This is back here on your tailgate. It's a close-up, okay, on the tailgate. Yeah. Okay, that's blood. Mm -hmm. This, it's kind of dark, but it's what we call the pillars. Yeah. So this is the driver door, passenger door on yeah. the passenger yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. There's blood there. Yeah. Okay. So what I've done is... That's blood, that's blood, and that's blood. Uh -huh. 
on your car? Mm -hmm. Whose blood do you think that is? No idea. But I told the police right at the beginning, yeah. right on the day they took me away, I'm 30. I told them if they wanted blood, I would give them blood. Yeah, absolutely. And they could compare it to, to this blood. Is there any, like, is it logical? Would that be your blood? Have you cut yourself? Yeah, I cut, I cut myself here. Yeah. Okay, and how'd you do that? I did it with a chisel. A chisel? Yeah. Okay, what? Um, and I explained all this to Dan LeMay. Okay. I even showed him what I was working on when it happened. I showed him how it happened and everything else. He actually helped me. Did he? Okay. Now, after you cut your hand, did you touch your car? I must have. Okay. No, and that's why I'm asking, right? Um, because, I mean, that, yeah, that would bleed pretty good. And you're, um, you're, you're right-handed or left-handed? Right so it would make sense that you would open doors with your right hand, things like that. I, right? I, I can only assume that this blood go on the car. But I'm that assuming would make that, that would make sense, right? It's the only thing I can think of. Is there any reason you could think of why that would be? I don't know. Her blood. I Jesus' don't, blood. I have no idea. It's her blood. Oh, it's her blood. It is. Oh yeah. Well, it looks to me like you've got everything wrapped up. You're a very logical man. You're a very smart man. I'm not a very smart man at all. You I'm are quite a sure if you tested my intelligence, it would be, at best it would be average. Well, what I mean by that is this. You are a very logical person. And so I don't want to sit here, sorry, and, and play any type of games with you. Uh -huh. I want you to understand why you're here, because mm -hmm. I think you deserve to be treated with respect and courtesy, yeah. just the same way you've treated me here today, yeah. which I appreciate. I'm telling you right now that that's her blood on your car, uh -huh. okay? But I'm also prepared to back it up, because you're such a smart man. That's the report from the Center of Forensic Sciences that you may have a look at and read which is not my opinion, it is their opinion that they have done the scientific tests mm -hmm. and they have verified the fact that it's her blood on your car. Yeah. And you can read through that, take your time. Or I can read no, it to I, you. No, Would you like me to read it to you? I don't have my glasses. They Want me to get them for you? No, I don't need to read that. I'll take your word for okay. it. That's her blood on your car. Okay. Okay. So I just want you to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you haven't seen her since the Saturday before she went missing. That's right. So she hasn't been in your car because she hasn't been anywhere near your car. And yet her blood is on your car. How does that happen? I don't know. You do know. That's the thing. No idea. We're at a point right now where <laughs> this isn't a what happened to her. This isn't a who done it. Okay, we know she's gone. Mm -hmm. I know you're responsible, but there's still some, you know, the big question is the, the why. That's the only answer we have left is mm -hmm. the why did this happen. It's not did you do it. We know you did, okay? This is only one set of scientific testing mm -hmm. that's happened. There's more scientific testing going on as we speak, mm -hmm. plus all the pictures, plus all the images. Mm -hmm. You can see where this is going. Mm -hmm. This is all coming to one great big mass of head, okay? Mm -hmm. You are a smart man. You know, okay? Tell me something. Yes. Did you execute a search warrant on Ben Kalman's house or car? Myself, I haven't. I just got here today. Sorry? I said, I just got here today, so no, I haven't. Well, did the Peterborough police execute a search warrant on Ben Kalman's house or car? No, not yet. Did they execute a search warrant on Dave Clark's house or car? What does that have to do with anything at this point? Because those investigations are ongoing, and those people are certainly being looked at. However, the evidence takes me where I need to be, and I have her blood 
all over your car. Mm -hmm. I have a lady that's missing that hasn't been seen since the 12th. I have a sign of a struggle in her driveway where there's blood on her driveway and obvious signs of a struggle. There's blood at your house. Blood at my house. Right. Well, there'll be blood all over my house. Right. Because I'm always bleeding. Right. Um, but but it'll be my blood. Okay. It's sure as hell is not Lizzie's blood in okay. my house. But it's on your car. Well, I don't know about that. That's science. It's right there. It's on your car. Okay. And you know what? Even even down to it's on your exhaust. Low. Okay. Here's the thing. We're we're at this point where you know exactly what happened to her. Now the way I have to look at it is and, and I do look at it like this. Do I think for one moment that you planned all this? Absolutely not. Do I think for one moment that you woke up one day and said that I'm going to harm her and take her life? No, I don't think that at all. Okay? But I, the fact is it I, did happen. I love her. I know you do. So help us bring her back. Because there's family. If you're, if you're convinced she's dead, you're not going to bring her back. No, but you know what? You know as well as I do, there's grandkids and a daughter and a, and son. a son that would like her and, remains. And, and the brother. Don't that would like her remains. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. And I know you love her. It looks to me like you've got this all wrapped up. But I want her. Oh. I want her back. People deserve can, that, and I you know cannot, that. I cannot answer any more questions at all. But you can. You absolutely can, because you can make up your own I mind. I know that. The lawyer told me not even to speak to you, but I, being a, the kind of guy I am, I don't mind speaking to you. You've been a gentleman. But, You've uh, been respectful. You've been cooperative. You're just telling me that you can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I killed Lee Fredette. This is what you're telling me. Right? I'm telling you that these so this evidence no, supports the allegations. There's no point in us talking any more about this. Well, there's there's actually as far as I can see, you've got this whole thing wrapped up. But you already knew that coming in here. You already knew that you're the person who's responsible. I didn't need to tell you that. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. I mean, this you can't argue with the science that the blood is there. It's you want to know what the numbers are? The numbers are 1 in 26 trillion that it's anybody else's but hers. Okay? A quadrillion, I should say. The I thing is I would dispute that. that you'll, you will have an opportunity to dispute mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. But how are you going to dispute it? I am not qualified. Sorry? I am not qualified to do blood analysis or anything like that. And nor am I, and that's why the scientists will come in, because it's not my opinion. It's the scientists that will come in and say, this is what they do for a living. And then there's the, all the images that are coming, all the cameras that are being downloaded. Mm -hmm. you got to admit. But what are you going to say then? You're going to look at the community, you're going to look at the family, you're going to yep. look at everybody, and then what are you going to say? I'm going to say, I didn't do this. So... And, and everybody's going to look at a, an image, everybody's going to hear about the DNA, everybody's going to read the results, yeah. and you're still going to stand there and say, I didn't do it? I don't know what I'm going to say until I speak to a lawyer. The thing is, you're a grown man, you can speak for yourself, number one, okay? I know you love her, period. That, well, that is not a doubt in my mind. I know you love her. Well, if you're quite sure she's dead, then it's a past tense. You know she's dead. You know she's gone. You you and I don't need to play a word game back and forth. I'm not playing. I'm just telling you I don't want to speak to you. That's all. Because the lawyer told me not to speak to you. And, and, and I'm telling you I don't have an issue with that. However, I'm simply reminding you that you can speak for yourself. You've, you've made that quite clear here today that you're very capable of talking. You're a very eloquent, very intelligent man. And you can also speak for yourself. You can also realize that the situation that you find yourself in, where you're at now, is you're at the point of no return. You've been arrested for murder. 
I've shared with you some of the evidence. There's a lot more that's still going on. Yeah. Okay. None of this is so really... I don't know why you would even bother talking to me. Because I would like her body back. <sighs> that's why. You know that. That's logical. Okay? That's logical. Because you know what? And it's not for me because I don't have a personal attachment to her. But you know what? There's her daughter. Mm -hmm. There's know. all her family. Okay? I know. I know. And, and you know what? Does somebody else need to eventually find those remains? Does a child need to stumble across them? Mm -hmm. Whatever the situation may be. Um, I would like her body back. Mm -hmm. and that's where we're at. As far as the murder goes and the who did it, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay? The why is the question that everybody has. And from a family perspective and a community perspective, they would like to see some dignity come to, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of whether she, she had personality flaws and she wasn't always the nicest person in the world to you and she maybe didn't always treat you 100% fairly. Oh, no. Make no, no mistake. No, no, no. We had no problems. No, but I mean, you talked about the fact that she had a temper, and with that would come violence. Lots of people have a temper. Absolutely. I agree. And I look at this case. I don't believe for one moment that you planned all this. I actually and think... I, just in case, I don't want you to have the wrong idea. I'm not trying to tell you that she was some kind of ogre. She was not. Oh, I, I never took that. She was a that. wonderful person. And... 99% of the time we go on just perfectly. I agree. And we so all have she's not an ogre in any way, shape or form. Okay. So she blew her top occasionally. Okay. It's not the end of the world. So then she deserves better than where she is right now. Uh, you know that and I know that. Okay. She deserves better than where she is right now. And let's bring her home. Do you think you would be able to give me a mattress and a pillow or something for the, that cell? Yeah, I mentioned that to you earlier, that yes. When I spoke to you earlier at the cells, I indicated to you that when you go back in there, yeah, I'll get you looked after. It's awful uncomfortable the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't think there's any chance of me going home and staying at home? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Let's bring her home. Yeah. Anyway, it's nice talking to you. And no doubt you'll be willing to talk to me again. We're not done right now. Oh, we're not done right now. No. Well, I just told you I don't want to answer any more questions. That's fine. That's fine. You can listen. I'm allowed to talk. I'm not sure. Right? Sure. But the thing is, you need to understand the big picture of where everybody's coming from now. Well, you've explained it very well. Right. The whole thing's wrapped up. Well, except for the fact that do you think that the lady that you loved, that really her family, everybody that's a nice person that you spoke of, they would like to see her back. In whatever form she's in, they would like to see her back. You know that. Okay, and I think that's fair request on their part. You know that, and I know that. Okay? I, I, I don't think I'm sitting here with a bad guy. I don't think I'm sitting here with any type of a monster. I actually think Have I... Have you checked my, my record? Yeah, you don't have one. You don't have one. You loved this lady. I think as you sit here, you still love her even though it's in the past tense. You're not a violent fellow. You're not a violent person. You're actually a very peaceable person. Um, that I know, okay? This was not planned. This was not premeditated. This was not all mapped out to the nth degree, okay? Well, why but the is fact it, is, it happened. Why is it first degree murder if it wasn't planned? Why is it first degree murder if it the, wasn't planned? The charge, right. first degree murder. If it wasn't planned, why would it be first degree murder? Um, because right now, since we don't have her remains back yet, there's evidence that could be on the remains that would constitute a first degree murder charge. Oh. Um, the other thing is in the court systems, 
they can always lower the levels of homicide. It's hard to go back up in control. I can't even get my bloody cigarettes, for goodness sake. And yet you've been provided with cigarettes, so you've not it's, been deprived. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you've got everything there. You shouldn't care how it looks either. You've got this all wrapped up. So I do care. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. That's nice. And you don't? I don't want to talk to you. You don't care? I do not want to talk to you. Do you care about them? I do not want to talk to you.